On behalf of the Peabody Health Department, thank you for joining us today to understand how we can manage rodents in our environment. My name is Sharon Cameron. I'm the Director of Public Health for the City of Peabody. And with me today is our Code Enforcement Inspector, Bill Pasquale, and our Sanitary Inspector, John Yale. And these are the folks who would be responding to any complaints that you might have with the Health Department. As you may be aware, we have been seeing an increase in the number of rodent sightings that have been reported to us over the past two years. This is not just a Peabody issue. I meet routinely with health directors throughout the North Shore, and most communities are experiencing a similar increase in rodent sightings. In fact, this is actually a national issue. Why is that the case? Rodents share our environment. When they're deciding where to live, they look for the same things that we look for. They want a safe and reliable source of food, a source of water, and a safe place to nest. So it's a complex problem, and addressing rodents in our environment really takes coordination and collaboration among homeowners, neighbors, business owners, as well as the city to eliminate conditions that would be conducive to rodent activity. So why do we care? It's certainly disconcerting if you find a rodent on your property, but beyond that, rodents are actually a potential public health problem. There are a number of diseases that can be transmitted by rodents to humans. Either they transmit them directly or they can be indirectly transmitted through fleas or ticks that are on the rodents. And there is a list of diseases that you can see there. In addition, um, rodents can trigger asthma symptoms in people who are susceptible or who have underlying respiratory conditions. Although that may be unsettling, these diseases are required by law to be reported to us at the Board of Health. Doctor's offices, labs, and hospitals would be required to report these diseases to the Board of Health if these diseases were identified in any Peabody residence. And we're not seeing these diseases be reported, with the exception of Salmonella, which is a very common foodborne illness. So although we're not seeing diseases being transmitted in Peabody from rodents, there's always the potential. So it's very important that you take precautions if you identify any conditions that you think might show a rodent infestation in your home. For instance, if you see food packaging that's been chewed, you want to throw that food away. Um, if you see droppings or if you maybe even see a dead rodent, it's important to remove that safely. You want to protect yourself by wearing gloves. You don't want to sweep or vacuum them up. You want to use um, tools if you can to remove them, dustpans, um, shovels, double bag them and put them in the trash. And then disinfect the area with a bleach solution. But I want to focus today mainly on prevention because there's quite a bit that homeowners and residents can do to prevent rodent activity on their property. And that's really going to be the focus of our discussion today. So John, can you give us some background about the type of rodents we're seeing? Sure. So um, the complaints we're receiving uh, most recently are uh, involving the Norway rat. So two rodents that we think of typically are rats and mice. The uh, Norway rat is quite a bit larger than a mouse. It, it can weigh up to a pound, where a mouse would only be at about an ounce and a half. Also, the, um, the rat is distinguished by smaller ears than a mouse. A mouse would have larger ears in proportion to its body. The uh, Norway rat also has a blunt nose. So um, we're talking about the complaints. Typically, there are uh, outside complaints. And um, the, the rats readily live in the environment close to a food source. And um, their, their range is quite small. They're, they're going to range 50 to 100 feet. Um, and they're quite prolific. They'll, they'll breed um, continuously all year long, and they'll have up to eight litters a year. So one female might produce uh, 20 pups on a typical year. They're also uh, uh, social animals where the dominant rats will be feeding at night, and the subordinates will mostly have to feed during the day, which isn't um, their norm. Um, so if we're seeing rats feed during the day, 
it might be because the population has increased in a certain area. So I wanted to just give you an overview of what we're seeing in terms of complaints throughout uh, the city. You can see that um, we've received complaints in every ward of the city and the orange bar mm. will show um, that was last season 2017 and you can see we had a significant increase in the number of rodent complaints um, than the prior year. Now the last bar is 2018 and of course we're just coming into the summer season so that's not a complete year but you can already see that this trend of increased number of sightings seems to be continuing. And if you look at the map, again, we are seeing complaints throughout the entire city. Um, we tend to see more complaints in the more densely populated area of the city, and that's not surprising, again, because rodents like to share our food sources, and so it, this is a typical pattern. The more dense the area, the more likely you are to have complaints. I wanted to talk you through our complaint protocol. We do have a formal system for receiving complaints. So the first step is to call the health department and put your complaint on the record with us. And we're gonna ask you some questions about you know, what you observed, where you observed it, dates and times. Um, as much information you can give us will be helpful when we send the inspectors out in the field. So after we receive the complaint, then I will assign it to one of the two inspectors and they will go out into the field as follow up. And Bill, can you talk us through what the next step of that process is? One of the first things we do as inspectors, that once we get a complaint, is to go out to the actual neighborhood where the complaint came from. And we have a, um, a brochure or a pamphlet that was developed by the North Shore uh, Health Department. As Sharon said, they meet all the time and they've developed a uh, informational packet on rodents and in this particular packet we go to each house and we, we leave these off uh, for the homeowners and it has some suggestions on how to keep your property clean uh, not to have too much clutter in the backyard uh, different suggestions on uh, composting and how to seal up your house if the rodents are actually getting into your house and also what to do if you are having rodents in your area as far as trapping the rodents, um, whether or not to get a pest control company or whether you could do it on your own by going to a local Home Depot or Lowe's and buying the equipment yourself. Some of the things as we're walking the neighborhood that we're looking for are, are different reasons that the rodents might be in the area. For example, clutter. Uh, if there's a yard that's totally cluttered with a bunch of, you know, children's toys or just old wood or lumber, uh, that might be a good harborage for the rodents. Another thing we'd be looking for is any open trash. Uh, a lot of times we see trash, you know, just the bags sticking out of a barrel. Um, you know, most people, uh, you know, have barrels and the lids are lost within the first week. Either the trash men lose them or they blow away or whatever the reason. So most of these trash barrels are open at the top and that can be uh, obviously an easy source for them to get their food. Um, another thing we would look for is any, uh, uh, the rodents are actually looking for three things. They're looking for water, they're looking for food, and they're looking for harborage. So another thing would be any water sources. And uh, that could be a little puddling of water, uh, something as simple as a, a wheelbarrow full of water, a uh, condensate leak from an uh, air conditioning unit, or a sprinkler system that might have a water leak and is uh, uh, providing water for the rodents. So these are some of the things that we're looking for as we're walking the neighborhoods to see if there's anything that we could speak to the owners about, um, you know, trying to, uh, to fix, to try to alleviate the rodent problem. Bill, that point you raised about the, um, the storage of the trash is really important because we do have a requirement, on, actually the state sanitary code has a legal requirement that um, trash be stored in covered rodent proof containers. So um, we really need people to be aware of that and take that precaution. I know oftentimes people will store the trash in the barrels covered for the week, but then put them out at curbside in the plastic bags. That's allowed, but it's not ideal um, because the rodents can very easily get through the trash bags. So we recommend that you continue to store the trash in covered barrels, even a curbside, um, or at least not put the trash out the night before. If you can put it out as close to collection time as possible, that certainly would be helpful. 
Um, I know you took these pictures in Peabody. These are actually from actual site visits you folks have done. I see a wood pile in this yard. Can you talk to me about wood piles and why that's a problem? Well, yes, many of the residents in Peabody have either wood stoves or fireplaces, and of course they want wood to burn for the, uh, for the winter. Uh, we recommend, and you know, I, I guess it's most common to recommend that the wood be stored away from the house as far as possible and that it be stored up off the ground. So a, a neat pile away from the house is what we would recommend on the, the, the fireplace logs. And you also talked about the importance of water, and I see on the slide that, you know, this homeowner looks like maybe they've got a small little pond in their backyard, but it actually takes very little water to sustain rodents, and, and water is actually a very important condition, more important for rodents than food, actually. They can survive longer without food than they can without water, and it takes just a very small amount. As you mentioned, the condensate drip from an air conditioning unit or something like that is enough water to sustain rodent activity. So again, it's really important homeowners are vigilant for those sort of things. So when you see these conditions, you'll try to um, work cooperatively with the homeowner to address them. But sometimes, unfortunately, we do have to issue formal citations if we think that somebody's um, property is contributing to an, a nuisance and they haven't been able to work with us in a cooperative fashion. Can you talk us through, both of you, some of the conditions that you've seen in Peabody um, that you think um, potentially have contributed to issues? Yeah. Um we have a lot of trash complaints, so whether it's commercial trash or residential trash, um, trash is probably a, um, one of the more common complaints that we get, whether in a neighborhood or a commercial setting. Uh, could be coming from overflowing dumpsters. Um, so we, we always address that. And um, we usually give the, uh, the, the person a, a time frame to complete or clean up the area between seven and 14 days, uh, typically. So trash is uh, uh, one of the big problems in the city in maintaining that. And we also have other, um, other areas that, that we see out there too. Uh, a lot of times we'll find people are, have bird feeders in, the, in their yards. And um, mm -hmm. you know people don't realize they're, they're actually feeding the birds, but as the birds peck at the bird feed and seed, that it goes on the ground and uh, you know they're actually wind up feeding the rodents. Um, also outdoors, a lot of people, you know, have pets and, and so they will put their dog bowls and water bowls outside for them. Again, the rodents don't know any different and they'll go over and they actually feed off of that. Um, uh, and along with the, the dogs, um, dog waste actually is a source of food for the rodents. So if you're not cleaning up after your pets, that could also be a problem for the rodents. Um, yard waste can be a problem also with the grass clippings and brush. People uh, just pile them up at the back of the yard and think that's a compost. Uh, it, it actually can be a perfect harborage for the rodents. Uh, we do encourage uh, composting, but it has to be done properly. Uh, this yard waste, if you're not gonna um, compost it, can be disposed of at the public works building uh, normal working hours and it's free of charge if you wanted to get rid of some yard waste. Also vegetable gardens and fruit trees. If there's any fruit that falls off your trees and is on the ground, same thing in the vegetable garden, uh, they should be discarded. Uh, again, this is sources of food for the rodents. And you mentioned composting. Can you talk to us um, about the proper way to compost to minimize the risks that rodents would get in there? So a, a good way to compost would be um, to have a container where it, it's made for composting. So you would uh, put your yard waste leaves and grass in a container and turn it. It, it rotates um, and it creates a nice soil eventually. That, that's the uh, best practice. If not, um, you could turn it by hand, but um, we don't want to encourage any food waste in those compost piles. So just keep it to yard waste. Thank you. So after we've received the complaint and you've done your walkthrough and you've done the neighborhood education and you've addressed with the homeowners any sanitary conditions you've identified, um, what's the next step if we continue to have problems in the neighborhood? Can you talk us through that? Uh, we. At that point, if we uh, have multiple complaints that are ongoing, we would uh, get the assistance of a professional pest control operator. 
we'd uh, make an on-site visit to the neighborhood or the area of concern with the pest control operator. And um, that person may uh, point out some areas that we overlooked initially, uh, as far as food or water or harborage. Um, if it's a particularly heavy infestation, uh, we would uh, then ask the pest control operator to bait or trap in that area. And um, if we do baiting, we do it in the sewers. Um, the city does not bait on private property. That would be something um, that the homeowner would need to address, and we'll, we'll get to that. But can you talk to me about what this photo is showing here? So um, along the fence line, there's indentations in the uh, soil. It looks like uh, rodent burrows. So if, if you're seeing something like this in your yard, chances are that um, rodents are in the area and they've burrowed in because the food source is close by. So they, they're not going to go far from their food source. Um, they have food, water, and now they've burrowed into the soil and they have a home. And the burrows are an area that the pest control operator may decide to treat after they've assessed the property. So Bill, can you talk to us about what um, options exist for homeowners who need to do pest control on their own properties? Okay, we recommend through the health department that you call a uh, certified pest control company to come out and, and look over your property. But there are some homeowners that would want to do it themselves and uh, you can buy a lot of the supplies from local uh, hardware stores like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, there are rodenticides, which are, you know, it's a poison for the, uh, for the rodents. Uh, but again, if you do buy these uh, chemicals and traps from the hardware stores, we recommend that you follow all the instructions uh, because they can be dangerous for other animals or for small children. Uh, rodenticides, for example, you don't just put them out on your yard uh, because birds could come and get them. There are little uh, traps and that you put the bait in, bait box stations, they call them, and the, the rodents actually go into these stations, eat the poison, and then come out, rather than just leaving them open on the ground where other animals or, again, little children or small pets could actually access them. Uh, so you want to follow all of the um, instructions. And again, we, we do recommend if people are considering applying poison that they work with a licensed pest control company to do that. So that leads us into the concept of integrated pest management. And um, when you're dealing with a pest problem, it's not solely or even primarily about putting out poison to try to um, address the rodents. It's really about a more comprehensive approach that looks at the sanitation of the property. How are you storing food? How are you storing trash? It looks at rodent proofing your property so that you're excluding pests from your home. And poisoning certainly is a piece of it, but it's not the biggest piece. So, um, you know, homeowners can be limited in terms of what they can or should be doing with respect to poisoning, but homeowners actually can be doing quite a bit about the other factors um, that are part of integrated pest management. And that's what um, this presentation today is about. The health departments on the North Shore, as I mentioned, we're working together to try to address this as a regional issue, and we're working on a regional IPM plan that addresses many of these issues. We're trying to do public education. We're looking at issues about how trash is being stored and managed, not just residentially, but commercially. We're looking at what sort of vegetation is planted. As Bill had mentioned, the way we manage um, you know, uh, waste is important, but also what's being planted is important. Vegetation close to a building can provide harborage. Br vegetation with low-lying branches can provide harborage. So we're looking at making recommendations about those sort of issues. We're looking comprehensively as a region about what sort of pest control requirements should be in place when we're issuing um, building permits, demolition permits, road opening permits, um, making new developments and that sort of thing. Um, and it, within Peabody over the past few years, one of the things we have implemented with all the food establishments in the city, and there are close to 400 of them, is we're now requiring them to develop an integrated pest management plan. So in the past, even though they had um, exterminators come in regularly, they weren't really addressing it in a comprehensive way. So now they're doing comprehensive IPM plans that we have them looking at how they're managing their trash and their grease and um, you know they're doing surveillance in addition to doing the pest treatment that they've always done. 
And of course, as part of this whole process, there is a role for code enforcement, and that's where we can come in. So um, I mentioned excluding pests from your home, and this is a piece of the educational materials that the inspector leaves when they go out. John, if you can talk us through some of the most common entry points, that would be helpful. Yeah, sure. So around your home, um, it's always best practice to remove clutter. So it could be um, discarded items, uh, tires, or uh, building materials, etc. So clean up the uh, outside area first, and then look at your perimeter of your home. There's probably uh, a lot of entry points that, that a rodent could get into. Um, uh, areas around maybe air conditioners, uh, conduits, pipes that go into the foundation or into the home, they should be sealed up tight. Um, rats, rodents can climb, so you want to look at your roof areas underneath the soffits and maybe some vents. Uh, they should be screened to prevent uh, entry there. If you have a chimney, uh, maybe a brick chimney, it could uh, be in disrepair, have cracks in it, so you want to seal up any cracks uh, around that area. Also around outbuildings, if you have a garage or a shed, uh, those would be harborage areas for rodents, and you want to make sure the doors are tight and um, there's no vegetation growing directly around there. I, I see on that um, paper they, there's a black hole up in the left hand corner. Can you talk to me about what that signifies? Yeah, so um, rodents don't need a, a big opening to get in. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a half an inch might, might be large enough. So a size of a quarter or maybe even a little less uh, would allow a rodent to get into your home. The other piece of the educational brochure that we distribute um, focuses on some other prevention methods. And Bill, if you could walk us through that. Okay, again on that brochure that's handed out in the neighborhoods um, when we get a complaint, uh, one of the top items, as John mentioned, is trash. Uh, so any overflowing uh, trash bins or trash barrels or just plastic bags that are out there. So if you don't have the cover to your trash barrel, uh, they also have enclosures that you can get that will fit maybe a couple of barrels and it has a cover and you know that would be acceptable if you could cover the trash in some way like that. Uh, the other things are the bird feeders. Those are very common and um, again, uh, if people are feeding the birds, then uh, you know we ask them to, to stop feeding the birds until the uh, rodent problem has subsided in that neighborhood. Uh, some of the other things, as John was saying, around the perimeter of the house, if you're sealing up openings for pipes or dryer vents or wherever you feel that the rodents are getting in, rather than just using like a caulking, they recommend that you use some type of like a steel wool uh, because the rodents are actually able to eat right through the caulking. Um, and the final thing is uh, trapping uh, the rodents. Again, at at the local stores, you can get the snap traps or the poisons. There are a bunch of different things that you can get. Uh, but again, uh, we would recommend that you get consult with a, uh, a licensed exterminator uh, if you're having a, a rodent problem at your property. Thank you for spending some time with us today to learn about how we can manage rodent issues in our environment. It's a complex problem, but the message I want to leave you with is that we can do a lot working together and we need to work together to address this issue. It's complex, it requires us to look at sanitation and it really requires us to look at eliminating sources of food, sources of water, and sources of harborage on properties throughout the region to eliminate this problem. So thank you. If you do have a rodent complaint, please call us at the Health Department and put your complaint on record with us. Our number is 978-538-5926 and we will follow up. Thank you. Sure.